Vince, because I see how he works with his attorney general, not to defend the Second Amendment, to, but to figure out ways to undermine it. I have seen him appoint people to our courts, not to defend the Second Amendment, but to figure out ways to undermine it. Here's my second problem. Just call it ways to infringe it, because that's what every one of the federal regulations on the Second Amendment are. They are an infringement on the Second Amendment. They're an infringement on our rights that are recognized by the Second Amendment. They buy their guns from a gun store. They get, they steal them. They get them on the black market. And let me tell you, ISIS and terrorists do not get their guns from a gun show. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Maybe we should I'm not, I'm not do a fan of his, but I, I have agreed with him. Yeah, he's th made tonight. some very valid points. The answer before he even knows the facts is gun control. Here's a fact. We are in a war against ISIS. They are trying to attack us here in America. They attacked us in Philadelphia last week. They attacked us in San Bernardino. Maybe you should do a background check on ISIS before you arm them. Right. I think they do yeah. so they can give yeah. them to the Actually, worst people can. possible. <laughs> the same way when they That's give right. them to the cartel members. Undermining it the way That's right. Barack Obama does. Yeah, so like right. I said, he's, he's made some good points tonight. The question they asked uh, Trump was, should the second or should uh, gun purchases be limited in any way? Trump said no. But once again, he does support a no-fly, no-gun buy list, and I can't get with that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly what you're saying. Uh, uh, to, to expand on that, Jakari, you're saying that if the government anonymously puts you uh, with anonymous charges puts you on a secret list without due process then you should also be punished with with to, for starters not being able to buy a gun but if they establish that principle then the government with a star chamber procedure can remove anything from you okay including your freedom they can put you in jail uh, you know with a well, I mean, detention without trial for the rest of your life you know because they want to take these criminal uh, terrorism database and they expand them out yeah. and when we see the 8 year old boy scout who can't fly a plane because he has the same name as some suspected terrorist when he turns 16 he's not going to be able to get a driver's license he's not going to be able to get a job he's not going to be able to get a college loan all these things just because he has a similar name to somebody who's on the list and the guy who is on the list probably doesn't even know it but the thing I find amazing is that they just run with this, and they and you see the uh, the assumption on the part of these Fox News anchors and Donald Trump and others that well because you are on some super secret uh, list that you're not allowed to challenge in court. I mean that's the basis of the the fundamental basis of our rule of law because they label you uh, anonymously, secretly. Now you should be punished for this, and nobody pushes back against that. They just say, oh yeah, well I guess terrorists shouldn't have guns, and it's like you're not a terrorist because the government secretly calls you a terrorist. Or you're a like, three -year -old. Uh, your buddy Lindsey Graham. Shut up! You don't get a lawyer. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm, that's I'm, right. I'm just joking. David hates Lindsey Graham. That's, that's right. I don't that's think right. anybody really likes the guy. It goes back to the NDAA: indefinite detention without trial, without charge. In fact, is in New Jersey. Get mo for everybody. Is to make it easier now to get a conceal and carry permit. We have made it easier to do that, not harder. And the way we've done it is because it is that important, and that's why I undermined it. Not by signing unconstitutional. Yeah, like said, uh, Christie, he he's uh, a little he lukewarm on gun rights because he has pardoned people. I know who've been arrested on some trumped up gun charges. I'll give him that. But some other stuff he says, I just can't really get with. No. Because here's what I'd like to tell He still said in that article what he's talking about, he's evolved on the Second Amendment. He still says, but if it's about safety, I'm not going to give up safety. In other words, still going to say, you know, your liberty is subordinate to the presumption of safety. That's not a trade off. We have the biggest majority we've had since the 1920s in the House. A Republican Give majority. Give up his liberty for safety. Deserves neither. Republican and will get neither. The American mm -hmm. people have to the degree that you give up your freedoms, you become a slave. And slaves are That's never right. safe. It's not constitutional. Mm -hmm. And we are going to kick your rear end out of the White House come this fall. Well, he's leaving anyway. All right. <laughs> Let's go, Republican. All right, we are going to definitely kick you out. <laughs> yeah. And, and guys, up on the screen, we're showing just some of the uh, gun love that Chris Christie really has. He loves to ban 50 caliber weapons. Yeah, that's right. Anything with more than 10 rounds, you know, if All you have 11 attackers, he's, you're screwed. He's for an assault weapon ban, and he was very clear about let that. let you before. protect yourself as long as you only need five bullets to do yeah, it. Yeah, as long as you pull out your freaking uh, revolver like in an Old West movie, I'm okay with that. Brainwashing the American people against guns. He appointed Sonia Sotomayor to the Supreme Court, someone who has been a radical against the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms he launched fast and furious he and I was just telling you during the break Jakari we we're talking about it when we had the thousand people show up in front of the Alamo mm -hmm. for an open carry rally Ted Cruz was there kind of he wasn't at the rally he didn't show up he didn't say anything to anybody he didn't speak he was in the hotel across the street 
And he was doing a fundraiser with some blue-haired old Republican ladies. That was his uh, contribution to the open yeah, rally with a thousand people there. Right? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was immediate, really for if nothing else, I mean, just as the spectacle. If yeah. you didn't know anything about guns, you hated guns, walk out there and see what's going on. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. You couldn't help but look at it. You couldn't miss it. I mean, the place was crowded. But he was going for the money. Right, he yeah. He knew that money. it was about the money, not about the people to, that he was going to yeah. represent. He's representing those blue-haired ladies. Yeah. Guys, we have some breaking news from Derek. Aaron McBreen, actually, I think he's found an ISIS safe house that's been located on American soil. Darren, let's go to you. That's right. And, you know, I guess one of my favorite, you know, one of the, the best ways of a political awakening is the use of political satire, uh, political comedy, you know, the cartoons. Nowadays, everybody's using the memes. And here we go. We have breaking news right now. And this is the FBI releases a picture of a ISIS safe house. And you can see right there that it is the White House. That looks House. familiar, so, yeah. Yeah, so that's, it's very powerful. And all it takes is just some imagination. You, you take a nice picture, uh, put, put a smart-ass comment on there, and millions of people have the opportunity to see that. So yeah. very powerful stuff. Good job. Yeah, that's that's awesome. great. That's great. <laughs> let's go back to him. Okay, let's go back to the debate. Let's finish up with his comments. We're nowhere to be found in that fight. Senator, you were nowhere to be found with the audit the Fed, buddy. Yeah, yeah he was AOL, AWL, AWL, AWOL. AWOL. <laughs> America <laughs> Online, yeah. <laughs> Could you explain what you mean by that? You know, I think most people know exactly what New York values are. I am from New York. I well, 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 you're from New York, so yeah. you might not. But I promise you in the state of South Carolina, they do. And, and listen, there are many, many wonderful, wonderful working men and women in the state of New York. But everyone understands that the values in New York City are socially liberal or pro-abortion or pro-gay marriage, focus around money and the media. Who was it, Como, um, who said, uh, if you don't like uh, abortion and gay marriage and all this stuff, get out of my state? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruce Springsteen's born in the USA. Um, and I was asked what I thought of that, and I said, well, if he wanted to play a song, maybe he could play New York, New York. Oh, I thought he was going to say, born in the USA, that doesn't apply to me. Right. He likes <laughs> O Canada, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Trump might use that as a comeback. With Tim well, you couldn't play born in the USA. And in that interview, he explained his views on a whole host of issues that were very, You dissed very the land of winners. From the views he's describing now. And his explanation, he said, look, I'm from New York. That's what we believe in New York. Those aren't Iowa values, but this is what we believe in New York. And so that was his explanation. And, and I guess I can, can frame it another way. Not a lot of conservatives. Iowans, I'm just like you. I forgot to mention I got a <laughs> half a million dollars. Just whoop up. Yeah. Are you sure about that? Uh, we're not all about the money, me and my wife. <gasps> yeah. It's just so... Conservatives actually do come out of Manhattan, including William F. Buckley and others, just so you understand. And <laughs> just so, if I could, because he insulted a lot of people, I've had more calls on that statement that Ted made. That New York is a great place, it's got great people, it's got loving people, wonderful people. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I saw something that no place on earth could have handled more beautifully, more humane. <clears throat> You're two, one hundred. <laughs> Your two, one hundred and ten story buildings come crashing down. I saw them come down. In free fall, right in their own footprint. Okay. And a third one, there actually. There was three, buddy. Yeah. Three buildings. Three buildings came down two that planes, day. Three planes, three buildings. Fall. Two planes, three buildings. We need to play that song we One had. of them was announced in advance on BBC, I believe. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Uh, building About 20 minutes up. ahead of time. Yeah. Pull it down. Yeah. Pull it down. Fought and fought and fought. And we saw more death and even the smell of death. Nobody understood it, and it was with us for months, the smell, the air. And then all the people got sick, the first responders, they told them they couldn't come to the 9-11 memorial. Yeah. And everybody in the world... I can tell you what, you know, what they enacted in the wake of 9-11 has the smell of death to it. The entire Patriot Act and national surveillance state has the smell of death. 
and it stinks. I'm, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this uh, surveillance state that we've got going. And they want to address that. Yeah. They want to address it. Rand Paul's not there tonight. They just want to re remind everyone of that moment that allowed them to give up some of their rights. But that's yeah. They yeah. were all rallying around that patriotism at that time. Well, look, it was a horrible, heart-wrenching thing. People really die. Right. But let's not pay attention to the fact that three buildings fell down with two planes right in their own footprint. Okay. Continued doing this sort of thing. Well, first of all, under a president. Ask him about Marvin. What's Marvin? The military. Last week, Secretary Carter announced that the the Navy is going to be cut again. It's now half the size of what it was prior to. There you go, Jakari. Our military is just. It's, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a rump nothing. organization. We got to make America great again. Done for refreshing this. the equipment. The B-52 is still <laughs> operational as the long-range bomber. It was inaugurated in the age of Harry Truman. The and they just did that uh, naval ship, very expensive. So we need uh, new planes. Oh, that, yeah, that yeah. stealth. Uh, that stealth uh, thing, and, yeah. and, and it went, what, 40 miles and then broke down? Yeah. And it towed it back to port? <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. He's getting his military industrial complex buddies are like, yeah. huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. They're saying a lot of the new Navy ships can't even handle the high seas now. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Well, that one could only get out and go 40 miles so it broke down. By a testing medium. We should make Japan. Pan build our ships. We, we to <laughs> Jerusalem to send a serious signal that we're back in the game with, with, with We got all the missiles we need. What are you talking about, Jim? Yeah. We're not freaking North Korea with our firecrackers. We have technological superiority. We need to get back in the game as it relates to um, our Arab nations. The rest of the world is moving away from us towards us. So we need to get back in the game. And that's why they restarted the Cold War, because, you know, even though there's a nice profit center, a lot, a lot of money to be made with the war on terror and with the war against the American people with the police surveillance state. You can spend a lot of money on cameras and computers to store everybody's uh, communications and everything. But for the really big bucks, you need a Cold War because you need to have that, you know, delivery of missiles. You got to have all the silos, intercontinental ballistic missiles and the planes, the bombers to take them over. That's where the real money is. That's why they're starting this up again. To dramatically increase oil production. Some say in an effort to drive down oil prices and force a lot of U.S. oil producers out of business. Sure enough, oil prices have tumbled. One brokerage house now is predicting a third or more of American oil producers and those heavily invested in, in fracking will go bankrupt. And soon Saudi Arabia and OPEC will be back in the driver's seat. U.S. energy uh, player Harold Ham recently told me, with friends like these, who needs enemies? Do you agree? Well, let me, let me first of all talk a little bit about my experience. I served on the Defense Committee for 18 years, and by the way, one of the members of that committee was Senator Strom Thurmond from South Carolina. Let me also tell you that after the 9-11 attacks, Secretary Rumsfeld invited me to the right. Pentagon. Just needed that the applause. Secretaries of Defense. And in that meeting, I suggested we have a problem with technology and that I wanted to take people from Silicon Valley into the Pentagon to solve our most significant problems. Spying on everybody. Right. That's, now that's Pentagon, like the Pentagon is in Silicon Valley. Yeah. So they so they just reversed had, it around. They've Palantir is growing so fast. The company that is a data mining company that was set up uh, by the CIA. They were the venture capitalists uh, in that Incutel. Their venture capitalists. Explore, from. They're growing so quickly that they're driving every. Nobody can get any office space in right. Silicon Valley and, and Palo Alto, the heart of Silicon Valley. That's what. That's the other price that we pay with military-industrial complex. Is that uh, these weapons of war drive everything out of our life that could be giving us something of real benefit? Uh, everything is being co-opted into building weapons right. and surveillance uh, methods, and these people are getting rich off of. It. And until we stop Washington from doing that, it's going to be this black hole of corruption that pulls in crooks like these people we have on stage. Right. Well, it's even with the all the the ingenuity there with the artificial intelligence. All of the that technology is going to the government because the government is the only one that can afford yes. to pay these companies to do the research and. And it's what Eisenhower warned us of with his military-industrial complex. He said. 
The, the military industrial complex is going to take over all research, all industry. It's going to become this thing that just feeds on itself, this, mm -hmm. this eater that takes, uh, that eats out our substance. And that's really what is happening. Right. But, so let's, let's tell everybody how we're going to make the military industrial complex even bigger, even yeah. bigger. Let's grow it. It's really not growing fast here. enough, yeah. You see with the Saudis, deliver them a strong message. But at the end of the day, we have to keep our cool because yeah. most of the time they're going right with us. And they must be part of our coalition. You know, the, the people who behead more people than ISIS, you know, of course, ISIS is 